Hey everyone, I'm Bryna Shields. I'm an artist and illustrator. And today I wanted to chat with you about my 100 day project and discuss some of the things that set me up for success. I've completed the first 50 days of the project and I thought I would take some time to share some of the things that I have learned so far and talk a little bit more about where I'm going next with the project. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, the 100 day project is a project where you choose a creative action to perform every day for 100 days and share your progress on social media. So this could be anything from singing a song every day for 100 days or lettering a phrase, anything that you are interested in playing with creatively for 100 days. So I started trying this project in 2015. That was the only other time I've been able to complete the 100 day project. And at the time that project was um, 100 days of paper cut patterns. So it was a very complicated process um, and it took a lot of work every day. So that's kind of one of my first lessons that I'll get into in a moment. There were a lot of steps to that process because I was cutting out shapes and then I was coloring in the shapes and then I was arranging them on the computer into a pattern after I scanned them. So it was, there were a lot of steps there that made it hard to repeat for 100 days. So I have made other attempts to complete the 100 day project in the past after that first um, successful try. And I just have never been able to complete it up until now um this year so that's another reason why i thought i would make this video to kind of share some of the insights that i've learned along my various attempts to complete this project so let's discuss some of the things that i feel really set me up for success this time around um, that i think could be applied if you're interested in trying this for yourself as well the first thing that I did was I created a mind map that outlined all of the things, all of the details of the project so that I wasn't spending every single day wasting mental energy trying to figure those things out. So everything from the size of the paper, the fact that I was using paper, the other materials that I'd be using, the time of day that I would be um, doing this project, uh, things like that, where all of those details are just ironed out ahead of time so that you don't have to be spending that mental energy, like thinking about logistics, and you can just focus your energy on your creativity. Another thing I did was I created a Pinterest board with a bunch of reference images, and I found that this was super helpful because on days where maybe I wasn't sure what I wanted to be creating, I already had a bank of images saved so that I could just flip through that and I wouldn't be spending, again, like mental energy looking through different like reference images until I found one. I already had pre-picked some images. And of course, you know, if the plan changed and I found other things in the meantime that were inspiring, that's fine, but at least I had this bank of images so that like I wouldn't have to be like thinking about that in the moment. I could just sit down at my desk, pick an image and get going. And here's the most important thing that I feel helped me uh, get to this stage of completing the first 50 days of my project, which is that I was really connected to my why. In my previous attempts of doing this project, I wasn't really connected to like strong reasons why I was doing it. And so I think it just, you know, it was easy to kind of let that fall off when, you know, maybe I was having an off day. Um, it was a lot easier to abandon the project. But this time I really sat down and thought about the specific reasons why I wanted to do this project. I had specific goals for myself. Like I wanted to try new techniques and I wanted to experiment with color palettes and subject matter and really kind of like push myself to go beyond my creative habits up until this point. And being connected to that, um, that reasoning 
really helped me stay focused on days when maybe I just like didn't feel like working on the project or if I was feeling really tired. I still had really strong reasons why I was doing that and that helped me continue forward. So I also thought I would share a couple of the things that I have learned so far um, in doing this project. And the first is that I have really released a lot of my ideals of perfectionism because when you have 100 days, if you're having an off day or you create something one day that you don't love, it doesn't really matter because you have 100 days to be working through, you know, all of these ideas and like the good and the bad. It all like it all kind of contributes to this larger picture. So it's really helped me kind of like think bigger picture rather than, um, you know, on an, in, an individual day when I might be feeling like I don't love the piece that I made. It's OK. And I think this is a really important thing to remember, especially because with social media, we see like these com completed pieces all the time where like people are creating these beautiful, you know, paintings and stuff and it's all like sped up. And like, I think it gives us this really, um, this really inaccurate view of the creative process because beautiful paintings or whatever your medium is, like those things take time and they take failure. And that's a really important part of the process that we don't necessarily see a whole lot of online. And so I think in doing this 100 day project, you're a little bit more confronted with that because yeah, not every day is a slam dunk, but that's also just part of the process. So just getting comfortable with having those bad days and still having to show, like I was still showing those pieces that I, you know, wasn't crazy about and just kind of like letting it go and, and being okay with that. This project has also really changed my ideas around success because every day success looks differently. Like maybe one day feels really successful because I tried a new color palette that I was unfamiliar with that I love. Or if I'm trying a new technique, that might be success. So I have really shifted kind of the, to this more adaptable um, idea of what success means. And I think that has like really helped me kind of um, help strengthen my creative process. The last thing that I have found to be really helpful about doing this project is that I feel more equipped to uh, plan out more long-term projects from here on out. This has given me a lot of insight in how to plan for like larger painting collections, for example, or just projects that have a longer timeline. Um, doing this 100-day project, and this is something I would recommend to you if this is one of your goals, is that I have really improved my skills in terms of like sticking with a long-term project and, and planning it out. Um, so that has been so helpful in just my, you know, in my skill building of doing this. So this is day one through 50. This is how thick 50 days worth of paintings is. <laughs> and I thought I would just uh, walk through all of these pieces and kind of talk through some of my ideas as I was working through them. So I started off with just a couple of florals, um, just finding my groove with the project. This was from a sketch in my sketchbook, I'm starting to move into um, experimenting with different colors. And here is where I'm starting to, again, play with my color palettes, but also um, using glazes. So I really wanted to experiment a lot with like how transparency can come through. So in this, the application is quite thick, so there's not as much transparency um, as I was maybe going for, and it's a little bit like streaky. So you can definitely tell I'm like learning how to use this um, technique. And like here, it's maybe a little, too thin, but you know, that's kind of part of this whole process is just kind of learning like what works and what doesn't and, and where, you know, I need to um, keep practicing. So um, I was really just 
this was a practice of kind of being forgiving with myself and, you know, not every day is a total slam dunk, but um, like this, I really love the forms and the colors that are happening here, but I didn't love the paper that I was using. Um, so yeah, it's just all about kind of like really being in the process and accepting whatever you've created that day and, and taking it all as a learning experience. I love like some of the motion, the line motion that's happening in this piece. I would maybe um, play a little bit more with the color and trying to figure out what the ground color would be. But again, this is all just like a process and experimenting. And, you know, these don't have to be like perfect pieces. This is one of my favorite pieces so far um, of the first 50 days, just experimenting with form and pattern. And again, um, I haven't typically used a lot of green in my color palettes in the past. So I really love, you know, how the greens and yellows are starting to work together. And I'm learning that I really love working with green. So that has been a nice discovery. I was on a bird kick this week, I guess. <laughs> Um, my partner and I have been getting into birding, so I've been a lot more curious about birds and incorporating them into my work. Here's another floral. Again, here I'm playing with uh, like masking in colors and um, playing with like the layers. I really love paintings that use a lot of layers and kind of like using solid color to like shape a piece. And so I have been experimenting with this idea a lot throughout my, um, my 100 day project is kind of playing with that layering and seeing what works and what doesn't and how I can improve that idea. This is one of my other favorite pieces. I love like the colors that are coming through and how they're all interacting and experimenting a bit more with like expressive marks throughout the piece. <laughs> this one, I, it's kind of funny. Like when I first made this piece, I like really hated it and, and didn't feel good about it. And then the next day I came back and I really loved it. So I think it just goes to show that you know you can't always judge your work in real time sometimes it takes a little bit of time to kind of like figure out what you really love about a piece like I love the marks that are happening here and just kind of like the the swirliness of the colors and even like the color combination but yeah when I first started this piece I really didn't love it so um you know I think that just speaks to like how art takes time just to kind of figure out. I love the motion of this piece and um, I've been really wanting to play with like movement in figures and bringing them into these kind of surreal spaces. Um, that's something that I'm really interested in carrying forward in my work. This was an example of something that I didn't feel was quite as successful as the image that I had in my head. But, um, you know, this is kind of like a combination of a few sketches that I had in my sketchbook. Like the, I had a sketch of like these, this line work and then the figure, I was just trying to fit a figure in there. And, you know, I am glad that I tried it. Um, but yeah, it's just an example of something that looks different than what I had in my head. And that's totally fine. This was also from a sketch in my sketchbook, and um, I kind of love like combining just random objects together. Uh, so, might continue incorporating that into my work as well. Snakes and strawberries again, playing with movement in figures. This one, I feel like needs some more work, but I love the motion in the, in the petals. Um, but I definitely think the colors need to like pop off a little bit more in order for this to feel 
more successful. Here I'm playing more with like those figures in these more like surreal settings. So like a figure with butterfly wings, like coming out of this clamshell. Um, I really loved working on this piece and kind of like collaging together different elements to create this like more surreal, um, this more surreal vibe. <laughs> Here, just kind of playing with abstracting forms. It's like almost leaves, but not quite. Playing with figure. I love like the motion that's happening in this background and Still trying to decide like what details I'd like to add into this piece, but I like the colors and that. Here I was experimenting with pansies because they just look so fun to paint. And I was using um, some color palette references that I've made to experiment with different colors, um, mixing new colors and things like that, like this orange especially. playing with figures and motion. This also is another example of um, experimenting with glazing and masking. So um, the ground of this was a lot more saturated color. Um, I started off like with a really colorful ground and then um, chiseled out the figure with this like lighter wash over it so that she really pops out. more surreal scenery with a figure, playing with hands. I love drawing hands with like symbolism. This one maybe could be like a, oh, I was experimenting with, um, with a water soluble crayon and pencil. Um, but again, like the pa this particular paper is like a little too textured for what I, would like because I really like when, um, especially for like doing undulating lines like this, I love when it just feels really smooth. So I think this would have been more successful with like a, a smoother paper, um, but I love playing with water soluble crayons and pencils. So, um, and I like the colors that are coming through in this piece. This one, again, the paper's a little too textured for what I was going for, uh, but it's all an experiment. Yeah, and coming back to that smooth, this is like my, I, the, part of what I've learned in doing this 100 day project is really honing in on what papers I love, just all the materials um, I have really kind of dialed into what I love working with and, and what I can kind of like leave behind. So I love this. Um, it's a hundred percent cotton paper. It's really smooth. Uh, all the um, media that I put on top of it just feels like so buttery and like blends really nicely. Um, so yeah. And this piece again, experimenting with uh, pattern and bringing um, figure and like surreal scenery into this. This is also one of my favorite pieces. And um, one of the things that I want to start offering is symbolic portraits. So doing custom portraits of people in these sort of like surreal um, environments based on what they're wanting to celebrate or um, mark in their lifetime or in this period of their life. Um, so I was kind of playing with that idea. More experimenting with um, the water-soluble crayons and pencils and also um, playing with the uh, glazing again to like show through some of the, the art that's underneath of it. Um, again, that textured paper, but I like, I like this piece despite the <laughs> textured paper. I learned that I really don't like working on textured paper. Again, with the glazing, I am really loving 
playing with glazing and layers and I'm definitely going to be incorporating more um, more layering into my work. My original background is in graphic design, so I feel like I have a tendency to um, work in like really flat. I mean, you can tell I, you know, have very like graphic shapes in my paintings, but um, right now I'm really practicing kind of like getting into the layering of painting um, because I just really enjoy. I really enjoy working that way and kind of like letting letting a painting surprise you. Um, whereas like in graphic design, you can be really, really controlled and tight, which is good for what, you know, you need to do um, as a designer. But I think as a painter, that has definitely, definitely been a practice for me. <laughs> this piece feels, I was like bringing in watercolor, but um, I was really struggling with the paper in this piece. Um, so, but you know, I, I actually love having these pieces on hand because it's really fun to come back to these, you know, like a couple months later and go in and, um, you know, see how you can shape the forms in a different way. Um, after you've had some space from a piece. So I think that's probably what I will end up doing with this sometime in the future. This is more experimenting with the um, symbolic portrait idea, bringing in some like palm trees because I'm very ready for warmer weather here in Portland more experiments with just a study of palm trees playing with snakes here's where i'm really experimenting a lot with um, masking in a figure and so for this i did a whole painting um, and then i went back in with crayon so i kind of like how the um the original painting is peeking through the texture in the um, uh, in the paper. Um, yeah, I I want to keep playing with like this idea for sure. Celebrating spring, starting to play with like some mark making um, in addition to like kind of this interplay between like representational forms and more abstract forms to like play with motion and things like that. This one, I think um, I had a lot of fun playing with this color palette and I'm not totally sure if I wanna like add more defined forms to this or just keep it as is. going totally abstract, had a lot of fun with this piece. I think maybe I originally painted it like this, <laughs> but you could do it any way you want. More playing with figures. This one isn't finished, I just realized, but um, yeah, playing with that uh, masking idea, allowing some of the painting to come through doing some blending with the colored pencil. So I did, this is a painting with colored pencil on top of it to kind of chisel out the, the forms that I wanted to use in this. This I was playing with um, doing like a fun neon outline and then kind of like letting that poke through just a little bit. And I haven't finished this one yet, but that's the idea playing with mushrooms because I just love mushrooms. They're such fun forms to play with. So I'll probably go back in and add like some, um, some additional pattern elements to this one um, and maybe turn it into a repeat pattern because um, I've been playing with some ideas for that as well. And this day 49 was the solar eclipse. So I did 
a painting of the eclipse with some eyes because I like to play with symbolism. And this is day 50. Um, just kind of experimenting with how, you know, I could have like more of just an outline suggestion of a form uh, versus like this more colored in piece. For the next 50 days, I'm actually changing up my process a bit. Um, I was doing one painting every day for 50 days, but that was really starting to burn me out a bit. And so I decided that for the next 50 days, I'm going to be working on one painting over a number of days. So the process is going to be way slowed down. And I think this will um, this will help me achieve my goals moving forward. Um, I've just been really craving slowing down and really working on one piece because a lot of the things that I'm interested in exploring right now have to do with technique, like working through layers and glazing. And they're just things that I, I don't feel I'm accomplishing by doing one painting every day that I think um, I will benefit more from working on one painting over a number of days. And so I'm changing up the plan for a bit. That's the beauty of the 100 day project is that you can pivot if there are things that aren't working for you. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And I feel really good about making this shift without having to completely abandon the project. It's just changing your vision and moving forward. So that's it for now. Thanks for joining me today. And please hit subscribe if you found this video helpful. I'll have more creative content for you coming soon. And um, if you found any insights from this video, I would love to hear about them in the comments. Or if you're working on a 100 day project as well, um, please feel free to let me know what you're working on because I would love to know. That's it for now and I'll see you in the next one.